Well, it is finally time for another tune lesson here on the channel. What's up, folks? David here, if you're new. And if you're not new, then you probably know it's been a little while since we've had one of these videos. And this time, we're checking out something a little bit different. And maybe you already saw this other recent video that I did for the Mandolin Monday series over on the Mandolin Cafe of a somewhat seemingly simple tune called Last Chance, right? But even though it seems simple on the surface level, this one's a little bit tricky because it's one of the few, not one of the only tunes in the bluegrass and old time tradition that I know of that's typically played in the key of F major. Take a listen here and see what you think. This one originally comes from the Clawhammer banjo playing of Hobart Smith, and you should definitely check out his original recording of this one because it sounds way different than how we're playing it here. But since then, it's been kind of straightened out and modernized and even adopted into some bluegrass circles. And some of my favorite modern recordings of this one include the Last Chance record by Russ Carson, banjo player with Ricky Skaggs and Kentucky Thunder. And then also there's a great band called Charm City Junction up in Baltimore, Maryland, who does a great rendition of this as well. And call me crazy, but I kind of like playing in the key of F major because it's challenging, but it's also rewarding rewarding and different than the other keys that we play in on the mandolin. And I love playing this tune because it gives me an excuse to work on this tough key center. And if, if you've never played in the key of F before, or if you still find F major really challenging, then no worries, because one of the best ways to conquer an unfamiliar harmonic territory like this is just to learn a great melody in that key. And not only are we gonna learn the chords and the melody to this great tune, but I also wanna show you an octave variation of that same melody that you can use to help map out some additional territory on the fretboard in the key of F, and also just give you some more ideas to work with whenever you're jamming on this one. It sounds like this. And along the way, we're going to check out some scales and some closed position shapes and some double stops that can help spice up your playing in this key. So what are you waiting for? Just grab your mandolin and let's get started. And our first stop on this journey is to learn the chords and the forms of this tune. And uh, not too bad, we only have three chords that we're working with here, starting with your F major shape. Then we have C and D minor. Don't forget the chop shapes as well. For F major, I still like to use this same shape, but just make sure you use your free finger to mute that A string when you're chopping. And for the C shape here, don't forget to mute that E string. And lastly, just shift up for your D minor chord here. And the chord progression here is pretty simple as well, right? For this tune, we have that standard two section form, an eight measure A section that repeats, and an eight measure B section that repeats. And here at the top in our A section, we have two measures of F to begin with. Going to two measures of C, then back to F major for three measures. And then ending with the D minor for measure. That whole A section repeats, and then we move on to this B section where we start off with another F major chord. We'll play this for three measures now, then on to D minor for one measure. Back to F for two measures, and then D minor for two measures. That B section repeats, and then you can repeat the entire form as many times as you want to all night long. <laughs> but before we go on to this melody here, let's stop and review that F major scale and some double stop shapes here in the key of F. I know that sounds a little scary, but it's really important to make sure you have the right framework before you go on and learn all those notes. Starting with the F major scale here in the first position. And for the key of F, you just have one flat note, B flat. All the other notes are natural. So we're gonna start with this F note here on the D string. That's the lowest root that we have for this key. We're gonna walk up to the highest note in this position. B flat. Don't worry about shifting for now, and then we're just gonna come back down. And then instead of stopping at the root, I like to go all the way down to the lowest possible note we can play, which would be G here in this position, before walking back up to F. It's a little wacky, but altogether it sounds like this. I 
like playing a scale like this because you learn all the territory here in the first position that you could possibly use here in the key of F major. And shameless plug, if you like this, check out this other video that we did here on the channel really recently where I show you how to play this scale as well as all 12 major scales here in the first position around the circle of fourths with some crazy scale exercises. So. Uh, Check it out if you're a glutton for punishment. <laughs> and once you get comfortable with that major scale in the first position, let's check out one other scale shape a tiny bit further up the neck. Here we are in the second position with your index finger on the root note, the third fret of the D string. And now let's see if we can play the F major pentatonic shape in closed position. And unfortunately, we don't really have time to dive into the mechanics of how this pentatonic scale works in this video, but hopefully more on that soon in future videos here on the channel, and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. But uh, for now, just get comfortable with this shape because the melody of this tune really intersects this pentatonic shape quite a lot, shifting up, playing some double stops around the scale, as well as some single note melodies here in the second position shape. And lastly, let's check out some double stops that this tune uses here in the key of F major, some shapes that you may have used in other keys, but let's check them out here in this key center, starting off with this shape right here. This is an F major double stop because we have the fifth in the root of your F major chord here. For the next double stop in this tune, just flip your fingers upside down. Now you have the first fret on the A string, third fret on the E string, and this is gonna be a C7 double stop because we have the seventh and the fifth of your C major chord here. Next, we'll shift up to that second position and we'll use our ring finger on the seventh fret of the D, index finger on the third fret of the A for another F major double stop. We have the third and the fifth of your F major chord here. Now just move your fingers up a string towards the ceiling, seventh fret on the G, third fret on the D, and now we have a D minor double stop root and third of your D minor chord. And later on, when we get to this lower octave variation, we're gonna be using some of those same shapes down an octave. Starting with this F major double stop shape, we have the fifth and root again. Then for the C7, we're gonna be playing third and fifth frets of your G and D string. And we're gonna be adding one more to accommodate for the lower register here. We're gonna be playing this F major double stop later on. Two, three, here we have the third and the root of your F major chord. Well, that's more than enough faff to about for now, and I promise we're gonna learn this melody, but we'll start off just by listening down to this tune one more time and see if you can identify where those double stop shapes are happening and how those scale shapes are working together to create those slight shifts up and down the neck. Check it out. You'll see the transcription on screen throughout this video, but if you want your own PDF copy, as always, you can grab that over on my Patreon page up in the link in the cards above here. There's backing tracks for this tune over on the Patreon page as well, which can be kind of helpful whenever you're working on a tough key like F major. But for now, let's just dive right in. And like we usually do here, we'll kind of tackle two measures at a time, starting with this first two measure phrase. All right, let's break things down here, starting with the open A and open E strings that you have at the beginning, followed by that double stop shape that we looked at earlier on the next upstroke. The open strings just offer a nice kind of punctuation at the beginning of the double stop and allow things to flow a little easier. Right afterwards, we have an embellishment, right? We have a hammer on. But what's kind of interesting about this one is that we're doing it across the bar line, starting with an upstroke. So we're playing an up on the C note on the third fret of the A string, hammering on with your ring finger to the fifth fret. Then just make sure that you're playing the next note on the first fret of the E string with an upstroke so that you can keep your alternation motion going for that whole passage. Let's try this phrase together now. When you're ready, that next two measure phrase sounds like this. We're doing some more open strings at the beginning of this phrase, but now we're hopping up to that second double stop shape that we learned on the one and three of your A and E. And we're also doing another hammer-on across the bar line, now on your E string from the three to five. Lastly, we also have this really quick grace note pull-off from the four to the three on your E string. Just make sure to get off that fourth fret really quickly so 
you don't hear that bluesy note too strongly. And when you get to this third two measure phrase here, this one sounds very similar to the beginning of the tune. Check this out. The only difference between this phrase and our first phrase are the last three eighth notes walking down to the open D string. So watch out for that. But when you're ready, let's try this phrase together. Then for that last phrase on this A section here, we're gonna use that open D string that we just played in the previous phrase as an opportunity to lay our fingers down in a double stop shape here. We're gonna play five and one to begin with, but we're really just gonna start there and quickly slide up to the seven and the three, another double stop shape that we looked at earlier. So we're gonna play that quick slide, and then walk down the pentatonic shape before playing this hammer on to our next double stop shape, which is the seven and three of your D and D strings for this D minor double stop shape. That's the end of that phrase. And once you've got those four phrases down individually, let's see if we can string them together and play them together here, once through the A section with that backing track. A one, two, three, four. tackle this B section now, which has some similar aspects to our A section, so it won't be too bad. Starting off with this first two measure phrase. So we've done this double stop slide before, right? Now we're just gonna walk down to the F note on the third fret of your D, and from there we're gonna do a hammer on from the three to five on the A string. And then finishing up this phrase with a hammer on triplet from the five to the six. Hammering on with a downstroke, make sure you grab that third note with an upstroke. And then ending this phrase on an open D string. Let's give that a shot. Similar ideas in this next phrase. So instead of sliding up this time, now we're just starting on the five and three of your D and A strings. Getting up to that familiar double stop shape again. Then we're just walking down that pentatonic scale to the hammer on, ending this phrase on that D minor double stop shape. Here's that all together. Again, there's some internal repetition here. When we get to that third phrase, you'll see it's very similar to the first phrase of the B section. In fact, there's only one note that's different. Instead of playing the open D string like we did earlier at the end, now we're playing a C note at the very end of this phrase to lead into that last phrase on the B. Check it out here. And the last phrase of the B is a piece of cake. We're just hanging out on this D minor double stop for ages. Rhythm's not too particular, but if you want to play it just like this, here's how I count it. One, two, and three, and four. One, and two, and three, four. But try out some different rhythmic variations and see what you think. So when you got all that ready, let's try this B section once through as well with that backing track and see how it goes. It's time for a little pop quiz here. Let's see if we can put the whole tune together, both A sections and both B sections of this melody, and I'll play it along with you here on screen with that backing track and transcription. So let's try it out. A one, two, three, four. <laughs>
Well, I'm really impressed with your work so far here in the key of F major. We've covered a lot of territory already, but just as an extra edge on this tune, let's see if we can learn that octave variation in a lower octave and figure out more ideas for the key of F major on the G and the D strings here. Take a listen and see what you think. So let me run you through this tune again, phrase by phrase, now in the lower octave, and show you what's different from the original version that we learned earlier, because we're gonna have to change a couple notes to fit within this new register on the mandolin, but it still sounds like last chance, right? So let's see what's going on. Starting with the first phrase again. So at the very beginning here, we're no longer playing the open A and open E strings that we played in the original version, right? But we are gonna play the open G and the open D strings instead, and it doesn't really matter what the pitch of those notes are. I think they're more like incidental notes that just leads into the double stop. It has a similar effect, right? So don't worry about that too much as we play through this first phrase. Moving on to the next two measures where we're gonna do a quick brace note slide up to this lower C7 double stop on the three and five of your G and D. And then we're also gonna be doing the same hammer on now on the five and the seventh fret of your D string that quick pull off as well from the six to the five. Then lastly, playing that open D string so that we can shift back with our ring finger to the fifth fret of the G string to get in position for the next phrase. And you string all that together, it sounds like this. Next phrase, very similar to the first again. We're just changing the notes at the very end fit within this lower register. They're not the original melody notes, but they, they kind of fill that same space, right? And the last two measures here, we're really gonna have to mess around with the notes to make things fit in this register as well. And this is what I came up with. See what you think. So starting off with those two open G and D strings up to our new F major double stop on the two and three. Then you're gonna keep your middle finger kind of rooted on the root here on the third fret of the D string while you're playing some different notes on the G string. <laughs> Lastly, now we're gonna be doing a quick slide up to the same D minor double stop to end this phrase here. Try to get those subtle differences under your belt here in this lower octave. And when you're ready, let's give this A section a go. A one, two, three, four. <laughs> final countdown here for our lower octave B section and most of the stuff we've already played here. Check out this first phrase. Same kind of double stop motion as the last phrase of the A section. Open D, C, and we're changing up the melody there to fit within this register. Next phrase starts out the same way. Another quick slide up to the D minor double stop there. Third phrase here is now exactly the same as the first phrase. Check this out. And lastly, you guessed it, just a whole lot of D minor. I think you got this. Give that B section a go and see what happens. Let's take a spin on this whole lower octave variation. Both A's, both B's. We got that transcription, we got the backing tracks. Let's go for it. A one, two, three, four. <laughs>
Well, the key of F major is all that more attainable now that you have this awesome tune under your fingers, as well as that octave variation, the major scales, the pentatonic scales, the double stop shapes, all that stuff's gonna be super helpful as you keep working on this tune. And I hope you'll try some different stuff too. See if you can combine those different octave variations together in different ways, A section high, A section low, B section high, B section low, whatever you want. And if you wanna see what I've come up for this tune as well, I came up with some variations and some solo ideas for that Mandolin Mondays video. You can grab the transcription over on Patreon and over on the Mandolin Cafe for free if you want to. So all sorts of stuff that you can check out with this one. And let me know here in the comments below what you thought about this lesson, what you thought about this tune, the key of F major, and if you know of any other old time or bluegrass fiddle tunes in the key of F, because I would love to learn some more tunes in this awesome key here. But that's it for now, folks. Thanks so much for checking out all this stuff, for checking out the Patreon page. Shout out to all you patrons, and I'll see you in the next video coming up real soon.